dollars for anything that needs a battery. Remember, if it needs a battery, all you need is Batteries Plus. America's battery experts. The original Clover Bar and Restaurant, bringing the Tri-Cities area a tradition in the finest freshly made pizzas. Stop in or carry out at the corner of Waverly and Beach Street. Baker Lumber is a Michigan centennial business located on Pennoyer Avenue in Grand Haven for well over 100 years. Although the trucks have replaced the trains, the service has remained the same since 1871. Baker Lumber, where you are history in the making. Olmstead Sign and Graphics, designing for the city of Grand Haven, Mr. Kozak's, Hot Rod Harley, GHTV, and many more. Call 846-4670 to get a quote today. For installation, fixing the broken, woodworking, big jobs, and small jobs, call A.J. Clark Handyman. Available for both residential and commercial work, A.J. is a handyman who's on the level. Call 844-2062 today. When the wind blows and the limbs fall, don't be stuck in the dark. Let Morton Electric install a generator to keep power to you no matter what happens. Whether commercial or residential, Morton can take care of your needs for installed and maintenance. Morton Electric, your electrical connection. Getting ready for any game is important, and getting adjusted is a key component. To be on top of your game, visit them online at GrandhavenChiropracticClinic.com. Grandhaven Chiropractic Clinic is a proud supporter of Buccaneer Sports. Rising at Building Center, generations of experience helping to build the Tri-Cities for over 60 years. Skolton Fant, a new location to serve all of your legal needs. Your full-service legal team in Grand Haven and Holland. Call 842-3030. Welcome to Hackley Stadium tonight. GHTV is right in with the crowd. Floyd Fonte along with Greg Shaler and Corey Nikoloff as we would bring in the OK Red Championship here as it's the Grand Haven Buccaneers taking on the Muskegon Big Reds. The Buccaneers come in 5-1, and 7-1 and one overall. Rockford is 5-1, and 7-1. And, and Muskegon is 5-1 and one in the conference, 6-2. And West Ottawa is four and two, six and two. Hudsonville three and three, and four and four. Granville one and five, two and six. Jenison one and five, and two and six. East Kenwood zero and six and one and seven. So that sets up tonight's big OK Red battle for the championship. As the Buccaneers, of course, taking on the Big Reds, who are six and two and defeated West Ottawa 28-14 last week. The Buccaneers coming into tonight after having defeated East Kenwood 37-7. Last year, the memorable game at uh, Buccaneer Gene Rothy Stadium as the Buccaneers defeated the Big Reds 13-12. Also playing tonight, Rockford at Hudsonville. So the winner of tonight's contest will be at least guaranteed a share of the OK Red Conference Championship. And uh, if Hudsonville was to knock off Rockford, then uh, the winner of this game would have the lone championship here in the OK Red. The Buccaneers, of course, have made the playoffs, as has Rockford, Muskegon, and West Ottawa have all made the playoffs here in the OK Red Conference. Other games tonight also, it's Granville at Jenison, East Kentwood at West Ottawa. Last week, it was Rockford 56, Granville 0, Hudsonville 12, Jenison 7, and as we said, Muskegon 28, West Ottawa 14, and Grand Haven 37, East Kentwood 7. And as we said, uh, we are right here in Hackley Stadium, outside of the press boxes. It is uh, packed in there, and we decided it was time to come out here in the crowd. And my colleague, Louis Kuhn, at home and uh, getting ready for the playoffs. So our best to uh, Louis as we get ready to go here. There's Floyd Fonte, Greg Shaler. And Corey Nikolov and the GHTV crew bringing you OK Red Championship 2010. Ben Siegel, the kickoff for the Buccaneers. 
It'll be Mr. Non-Returnable, Ben Stiegel, as it'll go into the end zone, and there'll be no return. That'll be a key for tonight because with the speed of the big reds of Muskegon, you want to make sure that you don't give them any opportunities to carry the ball back. So the Big Reds will start out with the ball on their own 20 yard line and quarterback for the Big Reds will be Cavante Keys. We'll see multiple uh, formations here by the Big Reds. Right now they're gonna come out in trips right, split left and off to the left is Deion Bailey. Option right to the right side. The pitch goes to Justin Means around the left side. Alex Smith is there to meet him. After about three yards, it'll be second down and seven. Just underway here at Hackley Stadium, the Grand Haven Buccaneers and the Big Reds of Muskegon battling for the OK Red Championship of 2010. As it'll be second down and seven, Mead be able to get three yards. He'll go in motion. They will hand off inside to. Big third down now, third down and four. Ball on the 26 yard line. Inside, nice tackle and great defense by the Grand Haven Buccaneers. As back out on the field for the Buccaneers is Tanner Jacobs along with Jerry Westerman. And Tanner Jacobs was uh, out with a concussion, but he is back. And Smith, Alex Smith, will go back to receive a high kick that he will let bounce. It'll get a big red bounce. Good defense by the Buccaneers of Grand Haven as they will now have their first uh, shot at the offense tonight. Ball will be on the 32-yard line. Of Grand Haven. We'd like to thank Dennis Threadgill Productions for producing and providing the support here for tonight's telecast for digital video editing and photography. Go to Threadgill Productions. As it is first and ten for the Bucks. Adam Poole, the senior of the Buccaneers, will have Pearl Twins left. Inside handoff, battling ahead for a couple Dalton of yards Stenberg, the is the Trey senior, Parker Dalton Stenberg, the 6'2", 250-pounder, who is back after being gone for two weeks uh, with an ankle injury. And Picks so that's down Dalton's down first carry in two weeks. And good for four yards, so I'll bring up a second and six. With the ball on the 36 yard line. Coming on counter is Poole. That'll bring up a third down. Bring up a third down and. Brings up third down and six after no game. Dakota Smith comes out for the Buccaneers and senior Adam Poole comes out with a play from head coach Mike Farley. The Big Reds are coached by Shane Fairfield and it's a pass for first down. Nice slant in pass. Good to Danny Carter of the Buccaneers. So the Bucks will have first and 10 on their own 49 yard line. Nine minutes and 52 seconds left in the first quarter here at Hackley Stadium. No score between the Grand Haven Buccaneers and the Muskegon Big Reds. It'll be Danny Carter split to the right side. He will go motion to the left. 
Poole is looking for him in the flats, has him. And it is a foot race. Connor still driving, driving, driving down to about just short of the goal line. Danny Carter, the junior, 6260 pounder. That's a 48-yard reception. That puts the ball down to the two-yard line where it'll be go to go, first and go from the two, driving ahead, Stenberg close. Buccaneers coming out in their Thunder offense, and so they get it down to about the half yard line. This is the initial offensive series of the first, well, of the game, first quarter for the Buccaneers here. No score between Grand Haven and Muskegon. Bucks threatening. Half yard line, second down, touchdown. Stenberg will go in, and they'll count that one yard, but Dalton Stenberg goes in to score with seven minutes and 46 seconds left in the first quarter. It's the Grand Haven Buccaneers, six, and the Skigan Big Red, zero. As Ben Stiegel will attempt the extra point. Holding for Stiegel, Matt Crow. High snap, Matt gets it down, the kick is up. And it is good. And so the Grand Haven Buccaneers will go ahead here at Hackley Stadium in the OK Red Championship 7-0 with 7 minutes and 46 seconds left in the first quarter. We're back. Great uh, offensive start for the Buccaneers, their first series as they drove the ball down 68 yards. It took them two minutes and 30 seconds. Six plays, and it was Dalton Stenberg scoring on a one-yard run. And then Ben Stiegel with the kick to make it 7-0. As Stiegel will be kicking off and deep to receive for the Big Reds will be Briggs. Kick will go again in the end zone. Good job by Ben Stiegel. We always talk about how big of a play that is, is there's no return, and the Bucks will continue to do that all night if they could take it and have that as the puts the Big Reds at the 20-yard line in the second offensive series for the Big Reds. Sellout crowd here, standing room only here, and the Big Reds as uh, this is for the OK Red Championship. Out of the pistol, straight ahead is Juwan Lewis, the junior, 5'11", 190-pound fullback. As the senior Westerman of the Buccaneers knocks uh, Lewis down after uh, Juwan gained three yards. So second down and seven. Coach Shane Fairfield sends in the signals for his big reds. They will have trips right split left formation. Try to go right through the middle with Johnson. And uh, they gain about uh, one yard. Ball on the 26 yard line of the big reds. Big third down now, third down and five. You see the big red fans and the Buccaneer fans cheering here. It's a big first down. Six minutes, 39 seconds left first quarter. Buccaneers leading. Flag on the play. Intercepted. Coming back around the right side. He's got an opening. Holding on to the ball and down to about the 11 yard line.
Dalton Stenberg. Call is against the Big Reds, and so the Buccaneers will decline. And a golden opportunity here for the Grand Haven Buccaneers as Dalton Stenberg ran that ball back to the 11-yard line, six minutes and 30, six minutes and 23 seconds left the first quarter. The Buccaneers are leading 7-0 over the Big Red Seven Muskegon. Adam Poole will come out in the backfield. And he's looking to throw. Tended for Moorhead. And the, and for Mike Moorhead goes and the coverage Three was Walker. So that'll stop the clock with six minutes and 19 seconds left here in the first quarter of this OK Red Championship game. Bucks have a second down and 10 from the 11 yard line. They can still get a. First down at the one. Danny Cotter will be split wide to the left and Smith to the right. Bucks. Oh, he's intended. And intended for Alex Smith. Alex Smith had a good shot at it again, and the coverage was Walker. That'll bring up a very big third down and 10. Danny Cotter split to the left. In the open. Incomplete. As intended for Mike Moorhead is incomplete. On the coverage Bring over there down. was McCarley as Moorhead was the intended receiver. And that'll bring up a fourth down in 10 with the Ben Stigo coming up to kick the field goal. Kick is up and the kick is good. So the Grand Haven Buccaneers will go up 10-0. And some of the Big Reds are cheering because they feel that was a victory of, of sorts for them as the Bucks had a first and go from the 11-yard line. And the Big Reds trying to get themselves uh, fired up here as it's the Grand Haven Buccaneers 10, the Muskegon Big Reds 0 with 6 minutes and 7 seconds left in the first quarter. Ben Stegall will kick off for the Buccaneers, and now deep for the Big Reds will be Maris. And the ball is again into the end zone. Non-returnable, Ben Stegall. Third offensive series here for the Bucks, as the Buccaneers were able to score after that interception by Dalton Stenberg. It was Ben Stigel kicking a 28-yard field goal. First and 10 now for the Big Reds. Keys, option to the right side, trying to get around the corner, and a nice game is uh, Means. And that is the area that the Bucks have to continue to shut down with the speed of the Big Reds is the outside corners. And that will be about a five yard gain, long five, so about a second and, uh, call it second and four, a long four. Split far to the left is McCarley. Motion, this time they're gonna try the right side. Buccaneers, tough hit, close to the first down on Means. Yeah, to Means the right 
And that'll bring up a third and short, third and about one. So a big play here, the ball on the 29 yard line, five minutes and nine seconds left in the first quarter of this OK Red Championship. Grand Haven leading 10-0 as the Big Reds third and one. And fumble on the play. Bad snap, Buccaneers come out strong. Westerman gets in and now it brings up a fourth down and that was just third and very short. Buccaneer defense of 2010 playing very strong as Alex Smith will go back to receive the kick. And Lewis will do the kicking. High kick that Alex will get away from and a good move. And so the Buccaneers are going to have some excellent field position as they're going to have the ball on their own 43 yard line. With four minutes and 12 seconds left in the first quarter, it's Grand Haven 10, Muskegon 0. Senior Adam Poole, he's going to hand off inside the Buccaneers. Nice spinning as Dakota Smith trying to run around the left side. Dakota Smith, the ball carrier. And he'll get maybe just to the line of screaming. Uh, just short of a, almost a first, almost a yard. Buccaneers playing really strong on uh, both sides of the ball here in the first quarter. They lead 10-0, three minutes and 39 seconds left first quarter. Second down and nine. Poole looking to throw under heavy pressure. Oh, gets it away. Coming across, first down. And completed to Jerry Westerman. Westerman playing tight end, went out on a slant pattern and stole the ball. It looked like it could have been intercepted. And as a 20 yard gain for Jerry Westerman and a big gain and move for the Buccaneers as they're now into big red territory. Just short of the big red 35 yard line. First and 10. The Bucks will have Pearl Twins left formation. They give it to Stenberg. He battles ahead to the left side. And off to Dalton Stenberg up the middle. And maybe a yard, half of a yard. Nope, they move right back Stenberg to the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down and nine. Wind blowing at the back of the Buccaneers here. So it's going from the south to the north in this sellout crowd for this OK Red championship game between the Buccaneers of Grand Haven and the Big Reds of Muskegon. Second and 10. Poole coming around the right side. He's got it. Great catch. Alex Smith gets a catch at the 20 yard line. On the cover for Alex was McMillan. And here come the Grand Haven Buccaneers. They now have the ball on the 20 yard line of the Muskegon Big Reds. It'll be Smith and Moorhead split to the left. Cotter to the right. Inside to Dalton Stenberg. He'll get a native to the line of scrimmage. Tough running inside is in on the tackle for uh, Big Reds was Sanford and Mitchell. If they mark it, they uh, mark it as a yard loss. So that'll bring it back to the 21-yard line. One minute, 38 seconds left here in this first championship quarter. Buccaneers leading 10-0 the Big Reds. Motion by Moorhead. Poole looking under some pressure, got some time. He's going to have to run it. Tries to go around the edge, and maybe just gets in the line of scrimmage. Adam Poole on the keeper. Good coverage the by the Muskegon Big Reds as uh, 
Poole unable to find anybody open, and that'll bring up a third down and about 10. Ball on a 20-yard line here. And Hackley Stadium, Grand Haven leading 10-0. One minute, 20 seconds left in the first quarter. Here comes Crab. Twins left. Morehead in motion. Two Morehead in the flat. Oh, what a hit. On the hit was McMillan. Morehead, he got banged up pretty good. And that will be a official timeout as Mike was hit really hard. And a lot of discussion going on here about that hit, uh, hard hitting as there always is between the big reds and the, uh, uh, it looks like Moorhead is really banged up. But it has been a week of uh, the NFL and college talking about uh, use of the helmets and just a pretty hard, hard tackle there. But brings up a fourth and five. So Ben Stiegel will attempt another field goal. High snap, kick, puts it down. Stiegel right through the upright. So the Bucks score. Again, in every series, that was a 32-yard field goal by Ben Stiegel. And so with 40 seconds left in the first quarter of this OK Red Championship game, it's the Grand Haven Buccaneers 13 and the Muskegon Big Reds 0. Ben Stiegel puts the Bucks up 13-0 after that 32-yard field goal, and he'll do the kicking off. So far tonight, he's put everyone uh, into the end zone which has helped earn him the, the nickname non-returnable. And the Bucks would sure like to see another one here with the speed of the Big Reds. And just short, the one yard line. Bringing that back was uh, Justin Means and uh, Eric Johnson along with Jake Rickfelder made the tackle. And so now the Big Reds will have the ball on their own 25-yard line. First and 10 for the Big Reds. Quarterback Keys will have the Big Reds in twins right split left formation. Option to the right. Here come the Bucks. Good coverage. Westerman having a really good game again after defensively as he made the tackle down. after Williams was coming around the right. On the option, and Williams is, oh, well, they're going to split. They're going to split uh, Mitchell to the left. And they'll, Big Reds will go into the pistol, and they're going to be called for the end of the quarter. So that's going to end the first quarter here at Hackley Stadium. It's the battle for the OK Red Championship of 2010. And it is the Grand Haven Buccaneers 13 and the Muskegon Big Reds 0. Start of the second quarter here at Hackley Stadium. It's the Buccaneers 13 and the Big Reds 0. Second and eight. Coming around, needing to make a tackle, missed tackle and getting around the edge is Fallen's Williams. And as stated earlier, the Buccaneers have to shut off the uh, Outside run is 
Williams there showing you his ability to uh, get around the outside and the speed of the big reds. Check your pockets or your belts to see if you have your cell phone. A cell phone has been turned into the press box. If you can come and identify that, we'll return that to you. Brings up a first and 10 for the Big Reds. Key's going to option now. His right side and a good tackle. As Eric Johnson making the tackle as it was on means. Eric Johnson again having a great year and uh, defensively. It is now the... 48-yard line of the Grand Haven Buccaneers, second down and seven. Quarterback Kivante Keys of the Big Reds is going to drop back. He's looking deep, takes off, tries to go around the edge, gets around the edge, and gets a first down. Flag. Now they're going to call a late hit on Jerry Westerman. So this has been the, the furthest that the uh, Big Reds have been able to uh, get into Buccaneer territory. We're going to call that against the Bucks. So the Big Reds will now have excellent field position. 11 minutes left in the first half here at Hackley Stadium. Grand Haven leading 13-0. Keys goes into the pistol formation. Hands off inside to his uh, fullback, Lewis. And now the challenge is to the Buccaneer defense as they've been so strong here in 2010. It'll be Fallen Williams split to the right and Mitchell to the left as Keys will hand off to his fullback, Lewis. And uh, in on the tackle was Big third down now, third down and three, ball on the Grand Haven 17 yard line and a great job by the Bucks as Key hangs onto it himself. So it'll be decision time now for Shane Fairfield, the head coach, first year head coach of the Big Reds. Brings up a fourth down and a very big fourth down here, fourth and two. Everybody's standing up here at Hackley Stadium. Ball on the 16-yard line. Key's going to keep it again, and the Bucks stop him. Oh, he might have slid ahead. Boy, looked like the Bucks had him, and then he was literally Keys just crawl over the top of his players. Challenge time to the Grand Haven Buccaneers as it's first and 10 now, ball on the 14 yard line of Grand Haven. Trips right, split left. This time they run the ISO flag on the play. Keys keeps the ball. And it will go against the Big Reds. Motion. Yeah. 
as Keyes tries to get his shoe back on. And so the Buccaneers decline and brings up a second and about nine. Ball on the 12-yard line, the Grand Haven Buccaneers. <laughs> Must have had like the triple knots in there because uh, Devontae Keyes finally gets his shoes tied on and he's ready to go with his big red second and nine from the 12-yard line of the Buccaneers. This time again, it's option. Keyes keeps it at a big tackle by Westerman. Brings up another big third down. Nine minutes and 22 seconds left in the first half. Grand Haven Buccaneers leading 13-0 in this OK Red Championship game. The last regular season game of the year for both teams. Both teams heading to the playoffs. Third and nine. Keys dropping back. Looks like he's going to throw pressure. Incomplete. On the coverage. So decision time has been made by Coach Fairfield of the Big Reds and Gomez will go for the field goal. And holding for Gomez will be Keys. Snap is good and almost blocked. The kick is over. Good. So Gomez puts the Big Reds on the board with seven minutes, 51 seconds left in the first half to make it Grand Haven 13 and Muskegon 3. Seven minutes, 51 seconds left first half and the Muskegon Big Reds get on the board as Gomez is able to kick the 29-yard field goal took the Big Reds 11 plays and uh, took them four minutes and 56 seconds in that series. 11 plays, 68 yards, out of bounds. So the Bucks should have some excellent field position. As their offense of the Grand Haven has looked pretty good as they've scored on all of their series so far in the uh, first half. Great crowd here at Hackley Stadium as they are four deep around, at least four to five deep around. So the Buccaneers will start, as we said, excellent field position on the 45 yard line. First down and 10, the senior Adam Poole handoff inside. Nice move, hard running. First down. Stenberg showing you that he's back from uh, that injury he had. He's been out for two weeks. And coming in and making a hard tackle. Getting hit hard was Mitchell. As that'll make it first and 10 on the 46 yard line of the Grand Haven Buccaneers. Twins left, Cotter to the left. Inside, nice hard running, Dalton Stenberg. Another first down. And again, <laughs> this time coming in making the tackles McCarty so. 
Dalton's run uh, two 11-yard plays in a row here. Seven minutes and 10 seconds left in the first half here at Hackley Stadium. Bucks leading 13 to three. And the Bucks will come in a pro set twins right formation. And the Heitzman will go to the left side. Oh, check that. It is Dakota Smith that was on the left side. And so Dakota got about uh, two yards and put the ball on the 40-yard line of the Muskegon Big Reds. Six minutes and 31 seconds left in the first half. Grand Haven leading this OK Red Championship game 13-3. to Pro, Twins right formation. Poole going to throw it. Got an opening. Closed fast. Coming in hard, making a tackle on Adam was uh, Duran and Mitchell. Third and about seven now. Big play for both the Buccaneers and the Big Reds. Five minutes and 50 seconds left in this first quarter. Grand Haven leading 13 to three. Trips right. Split left. Pool under some heavy pressure. Good screen. Nice play in the open, in the run. Great block. Close to the touchdown. And it is a touchdown. That's a 40 yard. Touchdown screen. Great call and a great play as the Big Reds were sending in their linebackers consecutively as Dakota Smith on that reception. And ben Stigel will attempt to put the Bucks up by another point. The kick is up and the kick is good. So the Grand Haven Buccaneers go up 20. To three over the Big Reds of Muskegon with five minutes and 34 seconds left in the first half here in this OK Red Championship battle. Buccaneers come out with that play. It was uh, 65 yards the Bucks went, took two minutes and 17 seconds, five plays, and it was the screen pass from Adam Smith to Dakota Adam Poole to, to Dakota Smith, 40-yard touchdown pass. As now the Bucks will give the Big Reds excellent field position. Five minutes and 34 seconds left in the first half here. Grand Haven 20, Muskegon 3. Thanks again to Greg Shaler, our statistician here, and our Producer cameraman Corey Nikoloff. Uh, producer Dennis Threadgill as inside comes. Tough defense. Buccaneers. Meads tries to come around the right side, but Eric Johnson is in there. And so is Nick Whalen. And Tyler Rose in there for the Buccaneers. like to thank tonight's production brought to you by Threadgill Productions. Dennis Threadgill, digital vid video editing and photography. For all your professional video needs, contact Threadgill Productions, bringing you this exciting OK Red Championship. Keys will keep it around the right, left side. And he is stopped short. Having to come up from the safety was Smith, Dakota, and uh, with four minutes and 23 seconds left in the first half, Grand Haven leading 20 to three. Keys, the quarterback of the Big Reds, will 
have a third down and three. Hands off inside. Going to be close to the first down. And Thomas does get the uh, first down. So just under four minutes now as Keys will have motion over to the left, but he's going to try a handoff inside again. No go with that Buccaneer interior defense. Thomas tried the same play and got a yard loss. As the big senior, Tyler Rose, six foot, 270 pounder, leading the charge for the Buccaneers. And it'll be a no gainer, it'll be second and 10. Ball on the 46 yard line of the Big Reds. Clock moving, three minutes and 10 seconds left in the first half. Second down and 10, Bucks leading 20 to three. Keys, he's going to option, keeps it. No way. Quentin Van Dorn and Norris Ellis in on the tackling as it is now third and eight. And Muskegon really taking their time on letting the uh, the plays get in there and getting going. Two minutes and 26 seconds left, third down and eight. Keys gonna have double motion, looking straight down the middle, complete. First down. On a comeback, a nice comeback pattern as uh, Mitchell came back. Almost looked like motion, but uh, there's no call there. So the challenge now is to the Big Reds and the Buccaneers as the ball is on the 41-yard line of Grand Haven. Two minutes and nine seconds left first half. Grand Haven leading 20 to three. Trips left. Motion coming back. Here comes inside. No way. Eric Johnson in there along with Everett Ingles. Thomas tries again to challenge the Buckner inside uh, defense. Second and 10. And the ball just short of the 40 yard line. And Nick Whalen made the tackle for the Bucks, a big tackle. And here comes Keys, makes a fake, gets around. Gets out of bounds with a minute and 23 seconds. We'll see where they'll mark the ball. They're going to put it on uh, the Grand Haven 36 yard line. Split McCarty. Carly will be split way to the left for the Big Reds. Means is inside of him. And it is going to be Mitchell. And Fallon Williams on the right side. Keys, everyone cheering here. Hackley Stadium, third and five. Keys looking to throw, gets it complete, short of the first down. That clock will keep moving. Brings up a fourth down. And the Great Haven Buccaneers are saying, hey, it's fourth down and uh, just play it straight. Taking a lot of time here. Looks like uh, the Big Reds are just going to wait and let the clock run down for them to make a timeout. And then the Big Reds have one timeout left. They let it go down to 45 seconds. So 45 seconds left in the first half with Grand Haven leading 20 to three over Muskegon. We'll be right back as it'll be a fourth and three for the Big Reds. Okay. 
Ball line, the Grand Haven 33-yard line, fourth down and three, 46 seconds left in the first half in this OK Red 2010 championship game. Keys, the quarterback of the Muskegon Big Reds, and he's going to try to run it inside, and no, close. Bucks had him, and getting and driving ahead was Thomas. Boy, the Grand Haven Buccaneers had him stop, but that was just a great run to get a first down. And as soon as those chains get set, the clock should start. Ball on the 30 yard line, first and 10. Key's quarterback, he rolls out, tries to give it on the inside again. That'll be the last time out by the Muskegon Big Reds with 28 seconds left. It'll be the Muskegon Big Reds taking a timeout. They're behind 20 to three to the Grand Haven Buccaneers and we'll be right back. Twenty-seven yard line of the uh, Buccaneers during this timeout gives us a break to uh, give our condolences and thoughts and prayers to the Roger Severini family. Roger Severini, longtime great coach, Hall of Fame coach, had a great privilege to uh, spend several times, and several weeks, in fact, with Coach Chev uh, at camps, and just a great guy. He passed away this Tuesday. Second down and seven now for the Big Reds. Keys looking down the middle. He's got his man open. So the Big Reds were able to come through and Fallins Williams. Big play for the Big Reds just before the half and to get the momentum going back for them as uh, as Gomez will uh, attempt the extra point. Keys will hold. Kick is up and good. So Gomez puts it through. That'll make his score 20 Grand Haven and 10 for Muskegon. With 22 seconds left here in the first half here in Hackley Stadium. As just before that throw, we were talking about Coach Roger Severini, who coached here in Muskegon. Great job here and coached at Muskegon Catholic. And then also one another place uh, Many was the West Ottawa Panthers, so. 22 seconds left here in the first half, and uh, it will be Alex Smith going back to receive the kick from Gomez. And we'll see if the Big Reds will uh, Go for that. That scoring play took five minutes, 12 seconds, went 65 yards, 12 plays, 28 yard pass from Keys to Williams. The senior Rick Felder of the Buccaneers is able to get a nice return to about the 25 yard line of Grand Haven. 16 seconds left here in the first half. It has been a great night for football and a great action and battle for the OK Red Championship here as the Bucks are going to just down it and regroup and go in with a 20 to 10 lead. One of the biggest leads a Grand Haven team has taken into the locker room at halftime here in Hackley Stadium for years. And the last time the Buccaneers won an OK Red Championship was in 1999 as the Buccaneers will be leaving with a great 
standing uh, cheer from the fans of Grand Haven as they lead the Muskegon Big Reds 20 to 10. And we'll be right back with the second half of this OK Red Championship game. Batteries Plus is your one-stop source for anything that needs a battery. Remember, if it needs a battery, all you need is Batteries Plus, America's battery experts. The original Clover Bar and Restaurant, bringing the Tri-Cities area a tradition and the finest freshly made pizzas. Stop in or carry out at the corner of Waverly and Beach Street. Baker Lumber is a Michigan centennial business located on Panoyer Avenue in Grand Haven for well over 100 years. Although the trucks have replaced the trains, the service has remained the same since 1871. Baker Lumber, where you are history in the making. Olmstead Sign and Graphics, designing for the city of Grand Haven, Mr. Kozak's, Hot Rod Harley, GHTV, and many more. Call 846-4670 to get a quote today. For installation, fixing the broken, woodworking, big jobs, and small jobs, call A.J. Clark Handyman. Available for both residential and commercial work, A.J. is a handyman who's on the level. Call 844-2062 today. Morden Electric knows how much your new home means to you. They take pride in every aspect of the job so you know it will be done right. There's no job too big or too small they can't power up. When quality counts, call Morden Electric. Morden Electric, your electrical connection. Getting ready for any game is important, and getting adjusted is a key component. To be on top of your game, visit them online at GrandhavenChiropracticClinic.com. Grandhaven Chiropractic Clinic is a proud supporter of Buccaneer Sports. Rising at Building Center, generations of experience helping to build the Tri-Cities for over 60 years. Skolton Fant, a new location to serve all of your legal needs. Your full-service legal team in Grand Haven and Holland. Call 842-3030. We're back here at Hackley Stadium for the OK Red Championship with the Grand Haven Buccaneers and Muskegon Big Reds. Here is the summary of the scoring. Grand Haven... Scored with seven minutes, 56 seconds left in the first quarter. That took six plays, two minutes and 30 seconds, and a one-yard run by Dalton Stenberg. And then the extra point by Ben Stiegel made it 7-0. Then the Bucks got on the board again with six minutes and seven seconds. Of the first three plays, 16 seconds, 32-yard field goal by Stiegel. That came after an interception by Dalton Stenberg, made it 10-0. Grand Haven scored again, 47 seconds of the first quarter, seven plays it took them, five minutes and 30 seconds. Another 32-yard field goal by Stiegel, made it 13-0. And then Muskegon scored. Seven minutes and 51 seconds in the second quarter, 11 plays. Took him four minutes, 56 seconds on a 29-yard field, goal, 29 yard field goal by Gomez. They made it 13-3. to three. Then the Buccaneers came back in the second quarter, five minutes, 34 seconds left, first half. Took him five plays, two minutes and 17 seconds. They went, uh, and it was a 40-yard pass from Adam Poole to Dakota Smith, screen pass, and the kick good by Stiegel that made it 20 to three. But the Muskegon Big Reds came back with 22 seconds left in the first half to go 12 plays in five minutes and 12 seconds and scored on a 28 yard touchdown pass from Keys to Fallen Williams to make it our score here, 20 to 10. Kick was good by Gomez and so Floyd Fonte along with uh, Greg Shaler and Corey Nikoloff, our producer, director. And we like to thank, again, Threadgill Productions for bringing you tonight's OK Red Championship game. For all your digital professional video needs and editing and photography, go to Threadgill Productions here in Muskegon as without uh, the support of Thread Guild Productions, we would not be able to bring you this exciting OK Red Championship game here at Hackley Stadium as we are ready to go 
as the Bucks will receive the ball first. And it will be Alex Smith deep. Gomez kicks it short. Nice grab and a good field position for the Buccaneers as they'll get to the 32 yard line. And on the side of the Buccaneers, you want to come out strong, take the opening kickoff, get down, get the momentum back into the ball game, even though you lead by 10. Inside of Muskegon, of course, they're saying, let's uh, shut down these Buccaneers. We're at home. Game time is about 47 degrees, and it is down to about 40 now. And it will be left side. Stenberg comes running hard. Tackled by McCarley. And so Dalton will gain uh, seven yards down to the 40-yard line of the Buccaneers. Great sellout crowd here and a great crowd of Buccaneers. We're right in the middle of them here. Second and three. No chance that time as the Big Red sending everybody in and Heitzman gets his uh, first carry of the night. And Big Red's been sending their linebackers in pretty consistently and uh, Buccaneers saw that earlier and threw that screen to Dakota Smith for a touchdown. We'll see what the Bucks will do now as it is a third down and five ball on the Grand Haven 40. Check that 38 yard line. Pull to throw. Oh, intended for uh, Alex Smith incomplete. And so the Buccaneers will have to punt. Going back to receive will be Mitchell along with McMillan. As we have a lot of alumni back here, up here in Hackley Stadium. Alex Smith will punt from his own 25 yard line. Picks it up and he gets a nice kick. Needs a Buccaneer bounce. Not bad. So it'll be up to the 2010 Buccaneer defense to get that ball back and get the momentum. And as it is 10 minutes and 25 seconds left, third quarter here at Hackley Stadium. Grand Haven 20, Muskegon 10. Big Red's trying to work on that outside. Is Johnson able to bring down Meade? And uh, good first, first down gainer of about seven yards. So bring up second and three. Big series here as this is the initial offensive uh, series of the Big Reds of the second half. Keys. Gonna hand off inside, wide open, foot race. Mm. Mike Thomas. Sixty-nine yards as the big reds come out. Gold Mass will attempt to put up the extra point. Ten minutes and twelve seconds left here in the third quarter. Keys to hold for the big reds. 
Gomez puts it through, and so that will make it 17 for Muskegon and 20 for Grand Haven with 10 minutes and 12 seconds left in the third quarter here at Hackley Stadium. <coughs> Alex Smith will be deep to receive for the Buccaneers. Gomez will be kicking off. We'll see if he gives uh, Alex a chance to return it. He doesn't. Another short one again. Total replay right there. As the Bucks will now have the ball, and they need to get the momentum going here. They got the ball on their 31 yard line. This will be their second offensive series of the second half. Grand Haven leading 20 to 17, but it's been 14 consecutive points now for the Big Reds, and they got the momentum. But there's a lot of time left in this OK Red Championship game. Motion coming over and Poole looking to throw, tipped. It's a game of emotion and right now the motion is on the side of the Buccaneers they have to keep their heads up and be ready to go. As they're looking at a second down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the Grand Haven 31 yard line. Be double twins. Stenberg in the backfield. Pool faced with several linebackers coming in. They're sending everybody. They, the big Reds. And so the Bucks are going to have to shut down that. Uh, Linebackers and just been shooting in linebackers and corners and the Big Reds taking some chances there. And it paid off for them as they were able to get to Adam Poole. Brings up now third down and 10, a very big third down. Trips to the left, trips left, split right. Everybody up standing, cheering. Adam Poole under some pressure, tries to get a screen to Stenberg. So the Bucks will have to punt with a fired up Muskegon Big Red team coming out. Bucks got to shut down this momentum. Mitchell along with uh, McMahon. Alex Smith the punt. Nice snap and a short kick that should get a pretty good bounce. And it does. Buccaneers cover it, and so, yeah, they say it touched the Big Reds. Wow. <laughs> That's going over big time for Grand Haven, and a lot of unhappy Big Red fans here at Hackley Stadium. And it was touched by the Muskegon player, and now the Buccaneers, this is the time right here. Okay, Red Championship game. Bucks ahead by three, 20 to 17. Nine minutes and 46 seconds left here in the third quarter. Golden opportunity for the Buccaneers. They got the ball on the 19 yard line. Give it to Stenberg. He'll break through. Tough, hard running. Gets it down about the 15. Buccaneers with that ball on the 15 yard line of the Big Reds. A very big series here. Second down and six. Everyone standing again. Twins right, split left. Here goes Poole. He's under some pressure. He can't get around. Duran is uh, 6'5, 230. 
defensive tackle with some speed as he caught Adam Poole for a loss. Here comes the play of the game so far here. Third down and 14 bucks looking to capitalize on that turnover. Twins left and there's a flag. Somebody lined up offside. Against the Bucks. Been great excitement here at Hackley Stadium as uh, that's going to make it third and 19 now for the Buccaneers. You'll look to see the linebackers and maybe even a corner, but everybody's going to come in hard on the uh, Buccaneers, in particular quarterback uh, Adam Poole of Grand Haven. Bucks will have twins left, split right formation. Poole dropping straight back. He's going to try and put it up for Smith. Ooh, gets it! Touchdown! What a catch! Alex Smith. And the Bucks capitalize on a big turnover by the Big Reds of Muskegon. Make it 25 to 17 with. Nine minutes left in the third quarter. Stigel looking to kick the extra point on a third and 19 yard play. High snap, the ball gets down, kick goes through and is good. And so, it is the Grand Haven Buccaneers 26 and the Muskegon Big Red 17. With nine minutes left in the third quarter here at Hackley Stadium. Total silence here at Hackley Stadium on the side of the Big Reds as they're stunned by that touchdown pass from Adam Poole to Alex Smith to put the Bucks up 27 to 17 with nine minutes left in the third quarter. Hard kick, dropped, picked up by Lewis. Some hitting going on out there. It looks like a fumble, but uh, Big Reds will recover it. Lewis and <laughs> been some classic playing out there on both sides. This is the Grand Haven Buccaneers and the Muskegon Big Reds. That was a six-play scoring drive that took one minute and 45 seconds. There's a 26-yard touchdown pass from Adam Poole to Alex Smith. And it came after that fumble on the punt that got touched, actually, by the player. The Big Reds, first and 10 for the Big Reds. Keys is going to try to hand it inside. Great defense by Grant Haven. It is to Juwan Lewis up the middle. Lewis maybe got a yard on that. One of the interesting things is there's uh, like about four radio stations here, two television stations, uh, ourselves and uh, Muskegon, but uh, also game of the week. There are at least four other stations here, so people are able to get the information out and receiving uh, what the score is, and that's bringing them in. We have, uh, and one of the scores we just got reported was Rockford 21, Hudsonville 0. And look out. Keys able to get a first down. Showing you his speed. Stenberg made the tackle, but not until Keys had already got a first down. The clock seemed to be moving slower here in this third quarter. 
Bucks leading 27-17. First and 10 now for the Big Reds. Oh, looks like a mix-up in the backfield. Nope. Keys. Johnson coming around on the right side, and that might be a yard loss. So where they mark it. Ball is on the 38-yard line of the Big Reds. Second down and 10, a long 10. Keys and Lewis, Lewis the back. Keys looking to throw. Under pressure, goes down. Fumbles the ball. Run. <laughs> there didn't seem to be any whistle. Everybody's going, run. Thought maybe it was a fumble. Albert Ingalls was the... Buccaneer that made the sack. Everybody's standing here at Hackley Stadium as it's third down and 13, a very big third down. As Keys, the quarterback of the Muskegon Big Reds, will take the call from head coach Shane Fairfield, and it will be tripped to the right, split left. Timeout by the Big Reds with five minutes and 14 seconds left in the third quarter. It's at Grand Haven Buccaneers 27 and the Muskegon Big Reds 17. Third down and 13. Big Reds with the ball. ball is at the Muskegon 35. On the Big Red 35. Everybody standing up and cheering here. Five minutes, 14 seconds left, third quarter. Keys coming around the right side. Does not get it. That'll bring up a fourth down and a decision time. As uh, Jacobs, who's been out for the last week with a concussion, and was able to get over and make a great stop on Keys. And the Buccaneer defense shuts down the Big Reds. Smith will be back to receive for the Bucks, and it will be Mitchell kicking it. Gets a nice high one, and Alex will get a chance to fair catch it. And nice job there, and flag. And uh, looks like going to be a personal foul on the Big Reds. That could be 15 yards. Well, the first half went fast here at Hackley Stadium, and this second half is, uh, we're in the court. Yep, it's against, what? Oh, man. That's not going to go over well. Both sides are booing, but uh, call that a double foul. We still have five minutes and one second left here in the third quarter. And so it will be the Buccaneers first and 10 from the 19 yard line. Bucks will have twins right, twins left split right. And off, pull, nice job. Good run by Adam Poole. And he gets a first down for the Bucks. Well, I know Adam's quick, but, well, we still got four minutes and 40, 42 seconds left, third quarter. First down for the Bucks. Oh, look like a movement, and their Bucks are gonna get called on it. It's going to take away that first down. A little movement in the backfield. Oh, 
Four minutes and 32 seconds left. So that'll bring up a first down and 15. Ball on the Grand Haven 24-yard line. Coming around the left side, gets around the left side. Nice move. Is Dalton Stenberg, he'll have a first down. Twenty-one yard run and gain. Greg Shaler, our statistician here, doing a great job along with Corey Nikoloff, our cameraman and director as the Bucks have a first and 10 on their own 45 yard line. Yeah, nice job. There's a foot race, there goes Alex Smith. Nobody near him, he will score. They threw a late flag, a late, late flag. Oh man, I can't believe they're gonna call that back on that late, late flag. There was some taunting going on uh, and looked like it was uh, Darren pushed one of the Buccaneers and boy, that would be, that would be a shame. No flag. There you go. Good call. That was a very good call and uh, took a lot of uh, courage for the officials to do that. Of course, Coach Shane Fairfield is going to say, hey, come on. But clearly, as the coach, you, of course, would uh, try to argue that point, but he knows exactly the factor on that one. Stiegel will uh, put the kick up. Puts it through. 34 to 17 with still four minutes and four seconds left in the third quarter. This has got to be the longest third quarter I definitely that's happened in a long time here at Hackley Stadium. But it's the Grand Haven Buccaneers 34, the Muskegon Big Red 17, with four minutes and four seconds left in the third quarter of this OK Red championship game. That was an 81-yard drive by the Buccaneers. Took them three minutes and three plays, a 54-yard touchdown pass. Adam Poole to Alex Smith. And then Ben Sigel on the kick. As Ben Stigel will kick off for the Buccaneers. And deep will be means. A little squib kick the Bucks will have. Bouncing around. Got to get him. <laughs> and that is Jawan Lewis. Two times now he's uh, created some excitement. He gets down to the 24. And making the tackle for the Bucks was... Johnson and Jamison Steffel. Buccaneers in on the tackle. Under four minutes now here in the third quarter. And the Big Reds will come out in double twins. They're going to trip it with motion onto the left side and try the quick screen. Bucks come up. And do a great defensive drive as they tried to quick screen to the left side of the offense. Three minutes and 35 minutes left here in Hackley Stadium in the third quarter. Grand Haven leading 34 17 over the Big Reds of Muskegon. This is the battle for the OK Red Championship. Second down and six. 
Ball on the big red 27-yard line. Pitch out. Good tackle. Eric Johnson came right on over and made a heck of a tackle on Justin Means. Or Means is just scurrying down the right side of the field. Brings up a third down and about two. Ball on the 32-yard line of the Big Reds. Everybody up cheering again on the big third down play. They try to go inside and the Bucks stop. Thomas has been able to drive the pile back in, in earlier, but this time he stopped. Nope. He got him across again. They gave him a good mark and uh, get hard running. Two minutes and 19 seconds left, third quarter. First and 10 on the 35 yard line of the Big Reds. Keys in a double twins formation. Again, Keys will keep it, try to go in the inside. Under two minutes, let that clock run. Big Red's taking a little time to let this go down. We'll see what the officials uh, make it go. Yeah, let it go. It's been a forever third. Period first. Oh, the pitch on the right side. Look out. First down as uh, Fallen Williams will get the first down, gets out of bounds. And it'll be a minute, 21 seconds left, third quarter. Alex Smith trying to get all the Grand Haven fans fired up, saying, Come on. We need you, Buccaneer fans. He's saying, you know, to keep it going here. Bucks lead 34-17 with a minute 21 seconds left, third quarter. First and 10 as two guys moving. That's going to go against the uh, big reds. Still one minute and 21 seconds left in the third quarter. But now first down and 15 for the Big Reds. Have the ball on their own 41 yard, 42 yard line. Yeah, they're both moving. Ah, Keys got them moving and they got away with that one. Keys keeps it. Gets tackled. No, there's some confusion there. Buccaneers got to keep this pressure on the Big Reds as uh, Big Reds aren't used to being in this situation right here. Under a minute here in the third quarter, finally. Grand Haven 34, Muskegon 17. Nice move. Got to get in and make the tackle. As uh, Mitchell is making a move off to the right side, and Alex Smith along to Westerman in on the tackle, and getting over there was uh, Nick Whalen. Clock will keep moving. As it's uh, third down, about one. Mitchell and McCauley go to the left. 
We'll see if uh, the wind has really died down. We'll see if the Big Reds will try and get a play here. Play's going. Flag. Flag on the play. Motion on the Big Red. So the Big Red's in the third quarter with a penalty. And so after the third quarter here in Hackley Stadium, the battle for the OK Red Championship, it's the Grand Haven Buccaneers 34 and the Muskegon Big Red 17. The Buccaneers, 12 minutes away from an OK Red Championship. They lead 34 to 17, and here come the Big Reds. And that'll bring up a big fourth down. No time went off the clock. Yeah, and um, the clock is. Yep, it uh, actually was a penalty in the last place, so uh, that's why we had to run that and stop the clock. So 12 minutes here. But uh, Buccaneers. As we said, leading 34 to 17 here at Hackley Stadium. And they'll switch around here. And back, appear to back the punt for the Panthers will be Fallen Williams. And Alex Smith will go back to receive the kick. Fourth down in six. Ball on the 49-yard line in Muskegon. We'll see if they actually go for the kick. There's a snap, and there's a high short kick. The Bucks need to get away from, and it gets a Buccaneer bounce. And the Buccaneers will have excellent field position as they will have start out the fourth quarter on the 35-yard line, their own 35-yard line. Like to thank Corey Nikoloff, our cameraman director, and Greg Shaler being here tonight. It was an interesting adventure and journey to get here, but we are here, and uh, we are in the midst of a very excited Buccaneer crowd, and hopefully that will stay till the end. Is it is 11 minutes and 51 seconds left in the game. Grand Haven leading 34-17, first and 10. On their own 35-yard line, Dalton Stenberg is hammered in the backfield. He barely got the ball, and in making the tackle was um, Sanford, the 6'2", 205-pound senior. Five-yard loss. Puts the ball back to the Buccaneer 30-yard line, and the Bucks will come out with twins right, split left. Stenberg in the backfield. Pool looking to throw. Got a nice pass and a nice gain over there to Carter. Pass completed to Danny Carter. Deion Bailey makes the tackle. So the Bucks get a little bit back there. Bring up a third and uh, long six for the Buccaneers. Let that, let that clock roll on down the books. Ball on the uh, 40 yard line. And we got a timeout by the Grand Haven Buccaneers. So with 10 minutes and 35 seconds left in the game here at Ackley Stadium, it's the Grand Haven Buccaneers 34 and the Muskegon Big Reds 17. Four, 
Third down and five facing the Grand Haven Buccaneers. Ball on their own 40-yard line. Ten minutes and 35 seconds left in the game. Grand Haven leading 34-17. And it looks like the Big Reds are going to shoot every gap. They're sending everybody in. Poole looking to throw. Gets it off. Going to be short of the first down. Making a nice catch as uh, McCarty made the tackle on Moorhead, who got banged earlier in the game. Good to see that Mike is back out there, but uh, brings on a fourth and two. That'll bring uh, Smith back to punt, and it will put back to receive. Now the Big Reds have switched over. They're going to have McMillan. And Mitchell, nice kick from the 20. Good coverage. And uh, Jacobs was the one who made that tackle. We talked about Tanner. He's a junior. Great to have him back out there in the secondary. Under nine minutes and 47 seconds left in this ball game. Big Reds have the ball on their own 27-yard line. Keys, the quarterback of the Big Reds, will have double twins. Lewis in the backfield. The handoff. No, Keys is going to come around. Tries to get. Oh, good defense. Great defense by Grand Haven. Stenberg makes the tackle. About a three yard loss on that play. Nine minutes and 18 seconds left in the game. Ball on the 24-yard line. Two guys moving again. Going to be a penalty on the Big Reds. They'll move them back another five yards. This is the battle for the OK Red Championship, and uh, at the very least a co-championship. Hudsonville uh, was losing to uh, Rockford, but uh, Rockford, the other team, in for the battle. And the winner of this game is guaranteed at least a share of the championship. So that'll bring up a second down and 18. As you see the fans of Grand Haven standing up and cheering as it is a big second down and 18. Ball on the 19-yard line of the Big Reds. Keys looking to throw. He's going deep. Nobody near him. Good coverage by the Buccaneers. We'll bring up a third down and 18. Good coverage by the Buccaneers. Nine minutes and 42 seconds left. Third down and 18. Ball on the 19-yard line. Everybody standing up again and cheering here. Hackley Stadium as Keys will have double twins motion over to the right. He's going to option. He keeps it. He'll be hit hard. Brings up a fourth down. Back to punt will be Fallen Williams. And the Bucks are going to play it straight. They're not sending anybody back. It's a nice high kick. Gets a bucket in her bounce, comes back, and so... 
Grand Haven will have an excellent field position as the defense of 2010 of the Grand Haven Buccaneers shut down the Big Reds of Muskegon. Eight minutes left here in this ball game for the championship of the OK Red. Bucks haven't won the OK Red since 1999. Grand Haven looking to go eight and one. Still a lot of time left here, eight minutes, and Grand Haven would love to have one of these drives that they've had in 2010 that eats up the clock and gets things going, first and 10. Counter play back in uh, about maybe a half a yard gain. Smith trying to run the counter back over to uh, his left side. So that clock is going to start moving real quick for the Big Reds and slow for the Buccaneers as the Buccaneers are leading 34-17. Bucks have trips right. Now they come up under tight. Breaking and hard running. You can hear those pads cracking all the way through. Is Stenberg? He is fired up, hard running. Going to be under six minutes. A big third down here. Bucks just letting that clock run down as they lead 34 to 17. Wins right. Motion by Stenberg to the left. Poole looking to throw. Wide open! Touchdown! No flags! Danny Carter. Just put a big one, one of the biggest touchdown pass touchdowns here in Hackley Stadium. He went 60 yards to put the Bucks up 40 to 17 with six minutes and 32 seconds left in the ball game. Stiegel, it's up and it's good. And so here at Hackley Stadium, the Grand Haven Buccaneers go up 41 to 17 over the Muskegon Big Reds. Six minutes and 32 minutes, or six minutes and 32 seconds in front of the Buccaneers and an OK Red championship. And a lot of the Big Reds fans are heading out, but there's no Buccaneers leaving. I'll tell you right now. And Ben Stigo will kick off. And so it will be deep. It will be Briggs deep. 292 yards for the Buccaneers passing here. Adam Poole, a little squib kick. Be down as the Bucks don't want to return on him. And down in that ball was Jeff Hudson. And as we said, that clock is going to be moving really fast for the Big Reds and slow for the Buccaneers. The Grand Haven Buccaneers here at Hackley Stadium playing for the OK Red Conference Championship leading 41-17. Six minutes and 29 seconds left. Big Reds have the ball on their own 33-yard line. Keys, he's going to look to throw to his left. Complete. Smith on the tackle. 
as he tackles Mitchell. Mitchell will be just short of, nope, he'll have a first down. Nope, second down. Nine yard gain. And so, uh, some of the Muskegon fans uh, cheering their guys, get it moving a little bit, but here comes a Key's gonna keep it, going around the right side, goes out of bounds on a good play. And five minutes and 40 seconds in front of the Buccaneers in an OK Red Championship. Seems like an eternity for them, and it's And the Big Reds will have a first and 10 on the Buccaneer 45 yard line. Keys, he's looking to throw his left all the way, incomplete. And intended for uh, Mitchell, Mitchell not looking. Johnson was in on the coverage. Five minutes and 36 seconds left. Second down and 10. Key's gonna keep it, cut inside the middle, will be tackled. Ah, to keep the clock running. Got some guarded, smiling Buccaneers here. Former coach Gene Ralia here and excited and all the Buccaneers, anybody that's ever played or watched the game here in Hackley Stadium to watch this, it's exciting as Mitchell will be tossed out. And completed to Todd Mitchell. Pushed out of bounds by Danny Cotter. Five minutes and one second left in the game. As we said, it just moving real slow for the Buccaneers. First and 10, ball on the 25 yard line of Grand Haven. Keys looking to throw. Complete. Another first down. And uh, McCarty. Got to get that. Start the clock, fellas. There you go. Keys thrown it incomplete to Mitchell. <clears throat> Stop the clock with four minutes and 44 seconds left. Grand Haven 41, Muskegon 17 here at Hackley Stadium in the battle for the OK Red Championship. And Keys will try to run it inside and no go. The Buccaneers tough inside. And so Thomas will maybe get a yard. And you know, will keep that clock going. Third and eight now as Keys is going to throw to his left. Another screen to Mitchell. Buccaneers shut down the pass, keep Mitchell in bounds. That keeps the clock moving. Going to be under four minutes now. Brings up fourth down and five. Ball's at the eight yard line. One of the all time great. There haven't been a lot of victories here at Hackley Stadium by the Buccaneers over the Muskegon Big Reds, but this is right up there as an all time great one. Is not only is it a big victory, but it is for the OK Red Championship of 2010. And coming across is key. There's a flag. Pass intended for Justin Means. Falls incomplete. There is a flag. Yeah. 
And the Buccaneers will get the ball with three minutes and 31 seconds. Three minutes and 31 seconds left here at Hackley Stadium and the Grand Haven Buccaneers leading 41 to 17 and we'll be right back with the conclusion of this exciting game. We're back and the Buccaneers are three minutes and 31 seconds away from the 2010 OK Red Championship. Nice run by their quarterback Adam Poole. Bucks came into this game seven and one, five and one in the conference, and they were tied with the Muskegon Big Reds five and one, and uh, Hudsonville five and one in the conference. And that clock is moving fast now for the Big Red faithful, as some of them are heading out, but not the Buccaneers. They're ready to have a celebration here. But we won't celebrate till after these two minutes and 53 seconds run off the clock. Second down and four. Ball on the 15 yard line. And the Bucks will call timeout as they saw that the Big Reds were gonna shoot all of their linebackers and challenge the Bucks to throw the ball. So with two minutes and 45 seconds left in the OK Red Championship game here at Hackley Stadium with the Bucks leading 41 to 17. We'll be right back. You're looking at history right here as it's second down and four. Here come the Bucks. They'll run hard inside and let that clock just keep moving. And history as the Buccaneers are looking and uh, on their way to winning the 2010 OK Red Conference at Hackley Stadium against the Big Reds of Muskegon. As they lead them right now, the Bucks do 41 to 17. And it's been a decisive battle here and great showing by the Buccaneers of Green Haven as they have a third down and two. They try to keep it and run it and it'll be short. Small, let's see where they mark it, is Dakota Smith just short. Well, coach is going to go for it. And let that clock keep moving. And then he's going to go for it. Fourth and short. That clock is going to keep rocking down, and we'll see what happens, whether the Bucks will call timeout. They will. And so the Buccaneers are one minute and 22 seconds away from winning the OK Red Championship in 2010 as they lead the Big Reds of Muskegon 41-17 here at Hackley Stadium. We're ready as it's fourth and one. Buccaneers are in a punting situation here. Fourth and inches, actually. And they had the ball on their own 15-yard line. And it's a nice snap. And the kick is a beautiful punt that will get a Buccaneer bounce. And it'll keep rolling and rolling. And that keeps the clock going in the Change will be one minute and nine seconds in front of the Grand Haven Buccaneers of 2010 and the OK Red Conference Championship. Bucks are uh, going to go eight and one, and Muskegon will go eight, or I'm sorry, six and three. Bucks will go six and one in the conference. And uh, Muskegon will go five and two. As still running, still fighting, means gets through. 
So there's a highlight for the Big Reds with 51 seconds left. Justin Means goes and scores to make it 41-23. Fifty-one seconds left, and we're not celebrating by any means. Corey, this is Floyd Fonte along with uh, Corey Nikoloff and Greg Shaler. We're watching a great one here. First and 10. Go for two points. So with 51 seconds left in the game, the Muskegon Big Reds make it 25 to Grand Haven, 41. <laughs> 51 seconds left in front of the Grand Haven Buccaneers and OK Red Championship. But the Big Reds have not let go yet as they went 75 yards just in means and got the two-pointer from Keys to Mitchell. As you'll see the hands team of the Buccaneers out there as the onside kick comes. Good job. <laughs> Following on the biggest onside kick is Mike. Mike. Ginocchio. Ginocchio, who is the guy who announces the young bucks all the time. Does a great job. And uh, we will also be bringing the young bucks they play tomorrow and their games it's been a buccaneer week of football and a great one as uh 51 seconds here at hackley stadium bucks leading 41 25 and they're just going to down the ball as Corey nikoloff reminded us uh that grand valley hillsdale game that's why you always do it. You don't try to score or do anything else. And you can just savor and enjoy this time because history has been made here in 2010 at Hackley Stadium as the Grand Haven Buccaneers are going to win 41 to 25. They got a snapper one more time. In fact, they're not even going to have to snap it. The Grand Haven Buccaneers win at Hackley Stadium 41-25 to claim the OK Red Conference Championship. Congratulations to Coach Mike Farley and the Buccaneers of Grand Haven and the Buccaneers faithful as that has been an all-time memorable great game, one of the greatest victories ever here at Hackley Stadium as the Buccaneers win that OK Red Conference Championship, and get ready for the playoffs next week as they continue to now make their move towards Ford Field as uh, the Bucks are on a roll. This is uh, Floyd Fonte on behalf of Greg Shaler and Corey Nikoloff saying thanks for watching sports here. And also, again, thanks to Threadgill Productions for bringing you tonight's OK Red Championship game as the Buccaneers will win 41-17. Batteries Plus is your one-stop source for anything that needs a battery. Remember, if it needs a battery, all you need is Batteries Plus, America's battery experts. The original Clover Bar and Restaurant, bringing the Tri-Cities area a tradition in the finest freshly made pizzas. Stop in or carry out at the corner of Waverly and Beach Street.
Baker Lumber is a Michigan centennial business located on Pennoyer Avenue in Grand Haven for well over 100 years. Although the trucks have replaced the trains, the service has remained the same since 1871. Baker Lumber, where you are history in the making. Olmstead Sign and Graphics, designing for the city of Grand Haven, Mr. Kozak's, Hot Rod Harley, GHTV, and many more. Call 846-4670 to get a quote today. For installation, fixing the broken, woodworking, big jobs, and small jobs, call A.J. Clark Handyman. Available for both residential and commercial work, A.J. is a handyman who's on the level. Call 844-2062 today. Morton Electric has been in business since 1985. Their clients rave about their quality, neatness, expertise, and the great service they provide. In fact, they were voted People's Choice Award. Morton Electric, your electrical connection. Getting ready for any game is important, and getting adjusted is a key component. To be on top of your game, visit them online at GrandhavenChiropracticClinic.com. Grandhaven Chiropractic Clinic is a proud supporter of Buccaneer Sports. Rising at Building Center, generations of experience helping to build the Tri-Cities for over 60 years. Skolton Fant, a new location to serve all of your legal needs. Your full-service legal team in Grand Haven and Holland. Call 842-3030. The original Clover Bar and Restaurant, bringing the Tri-Cities area a tradition in the finest freshly made pizzas. Stop in or carry out at the corner of Waverly and Beach Street. Meyer, reaching out into the heart of our community with quality service and the Meyer Rewards Program. Qualities, the local choice for all your custom screen printing needs. Right now, when your school organization places an order, 50 cents from each shirt will be donated back to the high school. Rising at Building Center, generations of experience helping to build the Tri-Cities for over 60 years. Skolton Fant, a new location to serve all of your legal needs. Your full service legal team in Grand Haven and Holland. Call 842-3030. Grapes Grinnin' Deli, located on 220 North Beacon, has an amazing selection of Mediterranean foods. Spinach pie, gyros, tabbouleh, baklava, and much, much more is what you'll find at Grapes Grain and Deli. Stop in for a bite to eat or for some good times. Visit us online at grapesgrain.com. Hey, good evening, every, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the, uh, the pool here at Grand Haven High School. Hi, my name is Brian Page, and hopefully along with Fred uh, Floyd Fani in a little bit, uh, we'll be giving you the play-by-play -play in color tonight. Uh, I've got the girls' water polo team against uh, the Forest Hills Rangers. We're about to get things underway, and here we go. This is called a sprint. It's the way the game is first put into play. It's much like a jump ball in basketball or a face-off in, ho in hockey. That was Hannah Mead for Grand Haven, number five, picking the ball up, and she dumped it off to, to, to number three, Aaron Page. Aaron centers the ball into uh, Emily Dean, and she loses possession there, and back, back comes Forest Hills. Um, I'll try to call out the four Hills players as we go. I'm not familiar with their team. Um, Grand Haven's team is coming off the heels of a great, thrilling victory last Thursday, last week against Forest, or um, excuse me, West Ottawa. They scored in the last minute of play after capping a three-goal comeback. And it was a very exciting game, and the girls are very hopeful tonight of uh, putting putting some uh, good effort together. That's Katie Martin, senior with the ball. She gets it into Emily Dean in the hole sets. There's a nice backhand shot there. Goes a little wide. For those of you not familiar with water polo, uh, it's a very transitional game, much like basketball or much like hockey. Uh, there is a shot clock, 30 seconds. Um, and the, the, the biggest difference uh, that the you'll, you'll see or you'll experience is the referees continually blow their whistles. That does not necessarily create a stoppage of play. Uh, oftentimes, there'll be a minor violation of the rules. They blow the whistles because the players simply can't hear them. They're in the water. Right there, there's a minor violation, and the ball comes back out on top. There's excellent defense there right now. I think that's Brittley Lapine. Yes, it is. And now we have a change of possession here. Lapine throws the ball up. That's Katie Martin. Katie's swimming strongly. You'll see a lot of, there's a nice shot and a good save. It'll be Grand Haven ball. They'll put it in from the corner, much like a soccer, uh, like a corner kick in soccer. And again, they have a new shot clock as the, as the goaltender touched it before the ball went out of bounds. That was Brittley Lapine 
Getting the ball out to um, Hannah Boudry, and she lost possession. Picked up by Sarah Greeley from uh, Forest Hills, and now they're, they'll advance the ball. A um, lot of hard work. They're, they they, they center the ball. Darren Page on defense. And again, that's just a minor violation where they bring the ball back out. There's a quick shot and decent save. And back come back come the Bucks. Again, the ball comes to Britley Lapine. And she was there was just a, a little little plug and pushing going on again right there with Aaron getting the foul and and uh, so they so the the offending team has to back off and allow them to put the ball back in play. Um, for more grievous infractions, uh, a player can actually be uh, kicked out of the game for a period of 20 seconds, much like a, a, a minor league in, or a minor penalty in hockey. And uh, or if the, if a if there's a violation in within the uh, I think it's a three meter line, the uh, the uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, defended team gets a, a penalty shot, uh, and uh, much like a penalty shot in soccer, so. There's a lot of different ways calls can go. Uh, very difficult to pick out fouls because most of the players' bodies are underwater at, mo at all times. The Bucks in the early, early going look to look like they're doing a pretty pretty decent job of uh, working the ball around. Everyone seems to be getting some touches and and uh, we're gonna continue to go. Here's Brittley Lapine now with a nice with a nice pass from Emily Dean. Brittley still with the ball, going into Emily. Emily's got a howitzer and she skips that one right past the goaltender. Um, She's shown an awful lot of poise this year, um, but she will she will fire that ball. She will take a shot on net at any time from anywhere. Uh, so you've always got to keep an eye on her. Again, that's number 19 for the Bucks. Both teams just kind of feeling each other out. And you know, it, it, it goes back and forth a little bit. Um, for watching a lot of these games, the biggest thing you want, you just never want to get down by too many goals because in essence, it just, it, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time and effort to get to get, to get it back. Uh, if you stay close and even, uh, the games tend to uh, tend to get kind of exciting towards the end. That's Hannah Boudry with the ball now. She centers it up, but no one's home. Four steals, gains possession. That's their goaltender, Sarah Robertson, with the ball now. Sarah passes it up to Page without. Page dumps it over to uh, Shelby, to Shannon. And that's uh, picked off there by Katie Martin, broken up, but they of course still maintains possession. That's a nice pass there. And there's just a minor, minor penalty, so they get to put the ball back in play. There's a change of, change of possession. Aaron Page now, oh, I'm sorry, that's Hannah Mead with the ball. Hannah's just had an outstanding season. She's really come coming to her own. Uh, she's been she's been uh, uh, doing most of the sprints uh, for the for the season and doing a great job there. She's just she's uh, been scoring scoring a few more goals. There's a good shot from Katie Martin that goes off the post. Change of possession back to Forest Hills. So the game's had a nice flow to it, back and forth. Keeping an eye on things. Katie again breaks the play up. Katie and Lip and and um, and Brantley have really uh, have called their number quite a few times already. Brantley back to Katie. Katie Martin bring it in. Gets a shot. Hannah, oh Hannah Mead on the rebound, but just can't quite pull the trigger. There's Aaron Page with his shot, and a nice save there by Sarah Robertson. So again, now four stills will bring the ball out. It's a nice pass there into Sarah Legou. Sorry, that's Legou. And she dumps it back out. Aaron Page breaks that play up. She gains possession. We've got a couple of streakers going. Page continues to swim the ball up. And he's got something going on. I cannot tell for sure what it is. Oh, 
Aaron Page still with the ball. Finally finds the open player. There's a nice shot. And that was Hannah Boudry with a shot from the wing. She was screaming for that ball. And Aaron finally got it to her. Back comes Forest Hills now. And that's Kate Scott with the ball, and she, she, pass, she passes the ball up to their Kendall Schwartz. Aaron Page broke that play up. She fires it right back for it again. Emily Dean is looking for it, but didn't see it. And Forest Hills picks the ball back up. Their goal here again, Sarah Robertson now with, now with the ball. And she, she passes up. Play's been a little sloppy, a little uh, a few unforced errors going both ways, but so far no harm, no foul. We've got we've got the ball back. And that was Brit Britley over to uh, Emily Dean. She passes the ball back. We've got a three on two and outnumbered, and that's Hannah Mead now with the ball. She turns back to Emily. There's about 13 seconds left in the shot clock. Emily Dean cross cross the shot. Oh, and a nice shot and a goal by Hannah Boudry. Number 21. That was an excellent job of the girls working the ball around, finding the open person. We had an overload. We had a three on two, out 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 uh, outnumber the uh, the Rangers and uh, took advantage of it. And uh, strike first blood. So it's a good thing to happen. We've got about 57 seconds to go in the first period. Bucks one, Rangers nil. The Bucks bring it back into play. I'm sorry, the Rangers bring it back into play now. That's Paige Adown. She passes the ball over to uh, Sarah Lego. That's Lego. I'm going to mispronounce that one all night long. But she takes a shot, and Amber Pettico makes the save in nets. And we've got about 36 seconds on the, in the game clock, about 24 seconds on the shot clock. So the Bucks will probably try to get a good, you know, try to work some time in this possession. Emily Dean with the ball. She's going to make a pass here. Oh, no, it goes for the, goes for the quick shot. My bad. Fires it high and wide. Now we've got almost in sync. 24 seconds on the game shot, or game clock, and 24 on the, on the shot clock. Page without with the ball, and she uh, she passes it up to uh, let's see. That's Kelsey Monk. That's Alyssa Land out there on D right now. And there's a center, centering pass. Aaron Page is on D. Keep those hands up. We got one second to go, and we're out, and we're out for the first period with a healthy score of one to nothing. And I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, to mention um, to thank our spring 2010 underwriters who helped bring you the broadcast here on GHTV, and they are the following: Rising Good Building Center, generations of experience helping to build the Tri Cities for over 60 years. Go to risinggood.com to check out their monthly specials. Rising Good Building Center. Go where the, pair, the pros go. And if you like great pizza and great atmosphere, well, the original Clover Bar and Restaurant in Grand Haven has been perfecting pizza since 1963. Don't forget their spaghetti and lasagna nights on Thursdays. Myers, reaching in, out into the heart of our community with the Community Rewards Program. Go online at Meyer.com to check out their weekly specials. The law offices of Scholten Fant for all of your legal needs in Grand Haven and Holland. Qualities Custom Screen Printing is GHTV's t-shirt printer. Call for all your custom printing. Batteries Plus now has two locations. One in Muskegon on Harvey by Grand Traverse Company or visit them in Holland, in Holland at 386 Bay Park Drive across from the Goodwill on Lakewood Boulevard. And finally, from Grapes, Grain, and Deli, for the best gyros, shawarmi, hummus, and other Mediterranean food in Grand Haven, visit Grapes, Grain, and Deli, located at 220 North Beacon Boulevard. You can find them on the web at grapesgrain.com or give them a call at 616-935-0806. Uh, before I forget, I'd like to thank the crew that's working the, sh working the, the game tonight. Uh, director is Corey Nikol Nikoloff. The producer is Dennis Threadgill. And we've got uh, on cameras, we've got Gage Ferguson, Cody Paris, Nathan Hicks. We've got David Marks on audio. And we've got Evan Seiler on graphics. So the crew's doing a good job. The girls are up 1 0. Everyone that's paying the bills has been mentioned, and we're ready for the second period. 
Both teams will defend the same ends they defended in the first period. At the at, at the half, they will switch ends. Again, here's Hannah Mead swimming for the, on the, on the uh, sprint, and she again wins it the second time around. She dumps it off to Aaron Page. That's number three. Aaron with the ball now. She passes the ball up. I believe that's Katie Martin with the ball. Katie gets it in the hole set. And Emily Dean. And she's a little bothered there, but there's no call. And the ball is coughed up. Sarah Robertson has the ball for, for uh, four stills. That's their, uh, that's their goaltender. And we have a kick out. Uh, who was it? Emily Dean. Has, uh, has received a 20-minute or tw I'm sorry, a 20-second kickout uh, for violation. This actually gives Forest Hills uh, an extra person in the pool, much like a power play in hockey. The idea here is to work it around and try to create the uh, the open open link, and they uh, they kind of uh, miss a pass there. Hannah Mead jumps all over it, dumps it back to Aaron Page, and she in turn dumps it back to Amber Petticone. She passes the ball over to Emily Dean. Now Emily with the ball. Emily's still bringing it in. She's got about seven seconds left on the shot clock. She takes a shot from outside and scores. Oh my. Well, I said it earlier and I'll say it again. Emily Dean will take a shot from anywhere at any time. Uh, I do believe without, I mean, without checking stats, I'm sure she's the team's leading scorer. Um, she normally plays the uh, like the hole set here, it's called, or uh, be comparable to like a low post in basketball for a center. Uh, and the offenses really generate uh, an awful lot out of that position. Four stills bring brought the ball down, and they give it up on a, on a, on a minor violation. Emily Dean now with the ball, and she brings it back up. We've got 23 seconds on the shot clock, about 5:32 to go in the period. Emily brings the ball over to Alyssa Land. This is just a sophomore. Nice pass into Aaron Page, the senior and captain. She's kind of losing, losing the ball a little bit. She's trying to get it back to Alyssa at this point. She's lost it. Aaron's got a great habit of stealing the ball like she just, just almost did there. When they've got their, when the players have got their hand, both hands out of the water, the, the officials can see that they're not, you know, tugging at the suit or doing anything under the water line. It's just all, you know, hard, Hard swimming and hard pressuring. And here we go. We broke it up again. Emily Dean broke that uh, broke that pass up. She still has it. She's going to get get the ball up to Aaron Page. Aaron has got a chance here. Left hand and she fires it in the net. Oh my! Well, it's a beautiful play created by Emily Dean. She broke up the pass, got it up to Aaron. Aaron took it down and with that rocket-like left arm of hers, fires the ball past. Four steals goaltender, and we're up by a score of three to nil. Four minutes and 48 seconds to go in this, the first half. Four steals brings it in again, and now it's broken up again, but is that Alyssa? Yes, it is. Alyssa Lamb. She has it. She's got a nice lead pass. Up to Katie Martin. Katie trying to find a little open water. She's got a minor foul there. Katie with a free pass in. Comes to Aaron Page again. We have a kick out on Forest Hills. They've got a player that's off, off, the, uh, off the pool, out of the pool right now. And she's back in. So Sarah Robertson once again start, starts to play back for Forest Hills. Kate Scott has it now. She's bringing it up. Katie Martin soon slides it on D. I take that back. That's Alyssa Lamb. And Aaron Page receives the kick out for something I didn't see down in the defensive end. Uh, they get a quick shot off, but it goes over the net. I'm thinking that she should be out now. They still have the man advantage. There's a shot and it's broken up, very nice. Player is allowed three of those penalties per game, I believe, in the fourth one. Then they are ejected from the game. So this is Aaron Page with 16 seconds left on the shot clock. She's still swinging it in. 11 seconds on the shot. There's a lob, and it's in the net. Oh, 
<laughs> oh my! That's uh, that's the that's a great shot. You know, I've always I've always felt for the goaltenders in this sport because much like uh, with soccer, if you come out, if the goaltender comes out to cut down the angle, the player can do that exact thing. They just lob it right over him, and that was a perfectly timed ball, a perfect shot of the circumstances, and uh, a very surprising but excellent goal from Aaron Page. And back to live action. Four fills with the ball. Down deep. Broken up so they get, they get a free put in, but there's no no major penalty. There's a nice nice shot from Sarah Legault. And uh, Amber makes a nice save. And back come the Bucks. That's Hannah Mead now with the ball. Hannah's a senior. She'll be going to Western Michigan in the fall. Looking forward to that. And that's Katie Martin now with the ball. Back to Hannah Mead. Beautiful pass. Outstanding pass. And she can't get quite the shot off. She's fighting with the goaltender. Oh, she fires it off the post. She's still after it. She's got it again. It's in the net, but we have no goal. I believe the ball was was uh, held under the water for, for a moment, and that is against the vi vi uh, minor violation of the rules. Outstanding job, though. Katie threw a great pass in there, and Hannah just would not give up. And uh, almost, almost banged one in there. So back comes four still. That's Paige without with the book. Emily, D Emily uh, Dean on defense. And she's got to put the ball in, in play with a pass. But she does. And here she comes right back to Katie Martin. Katie kind of calming things down, taking a look at things. She gets it into the, into the hole with the to uh, Emily Dean, Emily fighting, fighting for possession. She's got a minor violation. She's got to put a back in, back in play with a pass. She does to Aaron Page. Aaron goes cross court over to uh, is that Hannah Boudry. That's Kelly Reinhardt. I'm sorry. Kelly gets a pass in. That's Hannah Mead again. Well, I saw I saw an arm on her back. What do we got? Got to put it back in play out to Aaron Page up on top. Aaron with another lob and a goal! <laughs> oh my! That's the hat trick! Outstanding. I think that's more goals than she scored her first two years of playing, so that's just great. Uh, Bucks just seem to be just really, really hitting on all, uh, all eight cylinders right now. They're just seem to be not able, you know, they can't do much wrong, so we'll see if this continues. We've got a few substitutions going on now. Brayden Lapine back in for the Bucks. Hannah Boudry's about there. Emily on D on defense there. Ball comes in to Sarah Greeley, and she, she centers the ball to uh, Kate Scott, who takes the shot. But Amber Pettico makes the save and back him the Bucks. We've got about a minute 48 to go in the half. 24 seconds on the shot clock. And that's Brittley Lapine and she passes to no one at the time. And that's Emily Dean now fighting for possession. Emily back to Brittley. Britley over to Aaron. There's seven on the shot clock. Aaron back to Britt. Britt takes a shot. And there's a good save by, by Sarah Robertson. She puts the ball up. That goes to Paige without. She carries the ball up. Now we got Emily Dean out there kind of marking her. Doing an excellent job again. See those hands up on D? That's out of the water, I mean, it obviously shows the officials that there's nothing going on under 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 the surface. Got about three seconds on the shot clock. You might see Force will just dump, and they don't. They turn possession over. Hannah Mead picks it up. She's looking to go somewhere quick. Now she'll start to carry the ball up. You got 22 seconds on the shot clock. About 46 on the game clock for the for the quarter and the half. She gets the ball over to Aaron Page, and as it's broken up, and we've got Kendall Schwartz coming back now for Forest Hills. She throws the ball up to her teammate, that's Shelby Tashani. 
And that's broken up by Hannah. Nice job there. Hannah dumps it off to Amber. Amber's got the ball. We've got about 24 seconds left on both the shot clock and the quarter. She gets the ball up. It's over here to Hannah Boudry on the right side. Hannah, nice centering pass into, into Emily Dean. Emily comes up with it. Oh, we've, got a, we've got a call. Emily, nice pass over to Hannah Mead. Let's see what happens here. She gets it up. She fires at a goal. Absolutely beautiful play there. Emily had to put the ball back in play with the pass. Hannah Mead broke for open water. Emily laid it to her perfectly, and she fired it in the back side of the net. Outstanding job, and the Bucks are up 6-0. About nine seconds to go in the half. There's a long shot there. Comes just wide of the net. Hits the, hits the uh, end rope. We'll put it back in play. And that's the end of the second period. With the Bucks right now in a commanding position. Score is 6-0. We'll, um, we'll take this opportunity one more time to, uh, to thank our sponsors for the, uh, for the spring 2010 uh, broadcast here on GHTV. And again, they are rising to Building Center, generations of experience, helping to build the Tri-Cities for over 60 years. Go to risinga.com to check out their monthly specials. Risinga Building Center. Go where the, pro the pros go. Great pizza, great atmosphere. The original Clover Bar and Restaurant in Grand Haven has been perfecting pizza since 1963. Don't forget their spaghetti and lasagna nights on Thursday. Myers reaching out into the heart of the community with a community rewards program. Go online at Meyer.com to check out their weekly special. The law offices of Scholten Fant for all of your legal needs in Grand Haven and the Holland area. Qualities custom screen printing is GHTV's t-shirt printer. Call for all your custom printing. Batteries Plus now has two locations. One in Muskegon on Harvey by Grand Traverse Company, or visit them in Holland at 386 Bay Park Drive across from the Goodwill on Lakewood Boulevard. And finally, Grapes, Grain, and Deli. For the best Eros, shawarma, and hummus, and other Mediterranean foods in Grand Haven, visit Grapes, Grain, and Deli, located at 220 North Beacon Boulevard. You can find them on the web at grapesgrain.com or give them a call at 616 Nine three five zero eight zero six, and we'll take a break here at half. We'll be back with the start of the third period. Batteries Plus is your one-stop source for anything that needs a battery. Remember, if it needs a battery, all you need is Batteries Plus, America's battery experts. The original Clover Bar and Restaurant, bringing the Tri-Cities area a tradition in the finest freshly made pizzas. Stop in or carry out at the corner of Waverly and Beach Street. Meyer, reaching out into the heart of our community with quality service and the Meyer Rewards Program. Qualities, the local choice for all your custom screen printing needs. Right now, when your school organization places an order, 50 cents from each shirt will be donated back to the high school. Rising at Building Center, generations of experience helping to build the Tri-Cities for over 60 years. Stolten Fant, a new location to serve all of your legal needs. Your full service legal team in Grand Haven and Holland. Call 842-3030. Grapes Grinned Deli, located on 220 North Beacon, has an amazing selection of Mediterranean foods. Spinach pie, gyros, tabbouleh, baklava, and much, much more is what you'll find at Grapes Grinned Deli. Stop in for a bite to eat or for some good times. Visit us online at grapesgrain.com. Well, we're back just before the start of the second uh, half. Bucks in uh, great position here at 6-0. Again, this is Brian Page uh, waiting for Floyd Finney to show. I don't know if uh, I'm going to have a partner with the second half here or not, but if he does, I'll love, love to have him. Would like to thank the crew again, uh, director Corey Nikoloff, producer Dennis Threadgill. On cameras, we've got Gage Ferguson, Nathan Hicks, and Cody Paris. Evan Seiler is on graphics, and David Marks is on the audio. 
Uh, about to put the ball back in play. Uh, the Bucks are looking. It, I mean, I don't think uh, they're going to really sweat this this uh, period out as the uh, we start the sprint. Hannah Mead again going for three in a row. Oh, she go. Oh, we have a problem, and we are going to do it over again. No, they're going to have a. That's right. They have a jump here. This happens like three, two or three times in four years. So Forest still picks it up, and they start the first period or the third period with the possession. That was that was Kendall Schwartz with the ball. She gets it back to uh, Sarah Lagu Lago, and they're setting up their offense here on the on the near end. They take a shot high and wide. That was Kate Scott. Amber puts the ball back in play for us. She comes over to uh, listen land. Alyssa looks, looks around, looking for someone to, to pass the ball to. Now she decides to swim in a little bit. She had Katie Martin open for a minute. And there's the pass. And I think that's Britley. Yes, Britley now is it. About 10 seconds on the shot clock. Britley over to Aaron Page. Aaron Page still trying to get a handle on it. At five seconds to go. And she just kind of threw, threw it into Emily. I didn't see Emily there first with a backhand. <laughs> oh, and it almost goes in. Just trickles wide, but there's Katie Martin. Johnny on the spot, picks the loose ball up and fires it into the net. I believe that's her second goal of the game. And the Bucks are picking right up where they left off. Here comes Forest Hills now, Sarah, Sarah Legault. Passing it off. That's Kelly Reinhardt out on D. Hannah Mead is now on, uh, now protecting the ball. That's Emily Dean and uh, Sarah Lego. Lego. She has the ball. She again. She needs to pass it to a teammate to put the ball back in play. 26 on the clock shot. Hannah Mead doing a great job on D. Emily Dean breaks that one up. Gets the ball back. Aaron Page with the ball, and she passes it up. That's up to Alyssa Land. Alyssa looking for either a shot or a pass. She still has it. Kate dumps it off to Katie Martin. Katie Martin, if she can grab a hold, had an open shot. Still trying, still working it. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Still looking, still looking. There's four, three, two, one. Aaron Page, she can't get a handle on it. And we have got... A new shot clock, that's a kick out. To, um, Forest Hills is a man down, much like a power play in, in hockey. Great Haven should take their time, work the ball around, try to get it to the open player. That's Kelly Reinhardt on the far side. She dumps it back to Emily Dean. Emily with the ball. Still about 11 seconds to go on the shot clock. There's a shot, and that goes off the crossbar. And that's picked up by uh, Alice, Alyssa Land. And we, now we have another kick out, and that kick out is on number 20, Shelby Tashami. In the meantime, ball's put back into play. That's Kelly Reinhardt on the far side, working it, working it. She dumps it back to Alyssa Land. Alyssa Land takes a shot. Oh, again off the crossbar. Forest Hills picks up, picks the ball up, and back come the Lady Bucks on D. As Laura Rudy now with the ball for Forest Hills. She's looking to looking to advance it up to 21. That's Sarah Lego. That's broken up by Emily Dean. Emily Dean dumps the ball back off to Aaron Page, number three. Both are captains on the team, seniors and captains. Emily planning on going to Grand Valley, I believe, in the fall. And Aaron uh, Page, I believe, is going to uh, the University of Michigan. And she gets the ball into Kelly. Now she's looking to make a pass to put it back in play again. She dumps it back to Aaron Page out on top with about six seconds to go. Aaron gets it over to Alyssa Land. Alyssa's still fighting the, for control. Two seconds left on the shot clock. You either got to take a quick shot or dump it. And that, as soon as it, that, that horn that goes off does not stop play. It just lets the players know that their, their time has expired on the shot. Uh, and they just must release it at that time and change his possession to the other team. Forest Hills now has it. And the likes of Sarah Greeley, and she passes it up to 
It's Sarah Legault who took a shot. Back from the Bucks. There's Aaron Page with the ball, looking for looking for an out. She's got it to Emily Dean. That's a nice pass. Emily now with the ball. We still have possession. She's got to make a pass play. She gets it over to Alyssa Land. Alyssa Land back to Emily Dean. There's seven seconds on the shot clock. Emily still trying to get a handle on it. There's four seconds. She gets it in. There's a shot. That's a goal. And that's Hannah Mead. I was wondering whether or not they were going to be able to, get, to at least get a shot on goal there. And they do, and they score. So we've got some wholesale uh, uh, substitutions going on now. Uh, let's see. Got uh, Amber Pettacombe now in, now in, and uh, let's see, that's Britley Blapine on D. If that's the case, then I've been. It's Kelly Reinhardt's in net. Oh, I feel terrible. Okay, there's 53 year old eyes looking down here. There's a a nice shot, had a good arc to it, but it just sails over the net. Aaron Page brings it up. And she gets the ball out. And looks over to Amber. Amber passes over to Emily Dean. Emily back to Amber. Emily still with the ball. She gets it into Aaron. Aaron takes a shot. And there's a good save by the goaltender. They're contesting, contesting the rebound. And back comes Forest Hills. And there's a nice pass out to Kelsey Monks. Emily Dean back on D. On Kelsey. There's a nice pass into uh, Shelby to Shammy. She's trying to get a handle on it. Forest Hills trying to put something together here late in the third quarter. Only four seconds left on the shot clock. And they dump it in the corner, knowing the clock was about to expire. This is a great thing to do to, to, uh, to force the other team to kind of come out and get the ball. And back come the Bucks now. It's Brittany, Brittany Lapine. Britt's a senior as well. This was senior night tonight. All the seniors were honored. Nice, pre nice uh, little presentation before the... Uh, the game started. Also, the uh, the freshman team, the junior varsity team, scored a nice victory tonight prior to this game. So the Bucks are kind of on a roll right now. That's Aaron Page into, uh, I believe that's Katie Martin. And we give up the ball there. Back comes Forest Hills. 52 seconds to go in the quarter. 22 seconds to go in the on the shot clock. Katie Martin picks up the D on uh, Paige Adoud. Still hanging with her. Pretty much a man-to-man -man type defense. Very few people ever play like a zone. They, they, the players collapse down there. It's a great, great effort on Aaron and uh, Fridley's part. And there's a shot. We've got about 30 seconds to go in both the shot and the game clock. Fridley Lapine with the ball. Makes a nice pass into Hannah Mead. She's got it. She's got a step, and they lose control of the ball. There turns over to Force Tills. Now there's 14 seconds to go in both the period and the shot clock. Aaron, that's Hannah Mead breaking the play up. There's six seconds to go. Comes over to Shelby Jimmy. She passes the ball up. Doesn't look like anything's going to happen. And that's and the score at the end of the third period. As just announced, it's eight nil. 
I'd like to take this time to uh, thank the sponsors again one more time. Spring 2010 underwriters who helped bring you these broadcasts here on GHTV. And they are Rising Good Building Center, generations of experience helping to build the Tri-Cities for over 60 years. Go to risinggood.com to check out their monthly specials. Rising Good Building Center, go where the pros go. Great pizza, great atmosphere. The original Clover Bar and Restaurant in Grand Haven has been perfecting pizza since 1963. Don't forget their spaghetti and lasagna nights on Thursdays. Myers, reaching out into the heart of our community with the Community Rewards Program. Go online at Meyer.com to check out their weekly specials. The Law Offices of Scolton Fant for all of your local legal needs in Grand Haven and Holland. Qualities Custom Screen Printing is GHTV's T-shirt printer. Call for all your customer custom printing. Batteries Plus now has two locations, one in Muskegon on Harvey by Grand Traverse Company, or visit them in Holland at 386 Bay Park Drive across from the Goodwill on Lakewood Boulevard. And finally, Grapes, Grain, and Deli for the best Eros, Schwarmy, Hummus, and other Mediterranean food in Grand Haven. Visit Grapes, Grain, and Deli located at 220 North Beacon Boulevard. You can find them on the web at grapesgrain.com or give them a call at 616-935-0806. I'd like to thank the crew one more time again. We've got director Corey Nikoloff and producer Dennis Threadgill on the cam doing all the camera work tonight. We've got Gage Ferguson, Nathan Hicks, and Cody Paris. We've got Evan Seiler on the graphics and David Marks on the audio. And we should just about be ready for the start of the final period. Well, with seven minutes to play, the Bucks in a commanding 8 0 lead. I know they would uh, really just like to keep working on their game. Uh, they've got uh, dist you know, districts and, uh, and the, uh, coming up uh, in a fairly short time. I think they've got a game. Uh, I, know they have, I know they're playing Thursday. I'm not sure if they're playing Jenison or Granville. I can't remember who they're playing, but I know it's, uh, it's going to uh, affect their seeding possibly for the, uh, the playoffs starting in a, in a week or so. Ball's put back in play. Hannah Mead streaking for the ball. She wins this one cleanly. Dumps it back to Aaron Page. And here we go again. So Hannah wins three of the four sprints for the night. The other one did involve a jump ball because the official put the ball in play crookedly, if you will, I guess. Anyway, we're back to the possession. Grand Haven with the ball. That was Hannah Mead with the ball, or I'm sorry, Hannah Boudry with the ball. And I missed who took that shot, but no avail anyway. And back comes Forest Hills. That's Kate Scott with the ball right now for Forest Hills. She gets it up to number 21. That's Sarah Lego. That's Hannah Mead for us out there on D. And she's marking Kate Scott quite closely. Ball comes into Kelsey Monks. And that is Emily Dean on defense. Again, with both hands up, out of the water, demonstrating the officials that nothing's going on. There's a quick shot at the, at the buzzer. Comes wide. And Katie Martin picks the ball up. She gets it up to um, Brittley Lapine. Kind of broken up there. Back comes Forest Hills now. Oh, there's a nice lead pass out to Katie Kate Scott. Hannah Mead's gonna gonna catch up with her. She pulls up. She got she has to put the ball back and play with a free pass. She does. There's a long shot goes over the top of the net. It'll be Grand Haven's ball. With 5:32 to go in this the final period. That's Hannah Mead now with the ball. She brings it up. Kate Scott on D. She gets the she gets the pass into Hannah Boudry on the near wing. 
Cannon dumps it over the middle to Katie Martin. Katie swimming strongly with the ball still. 12 seconds to go in the shot clock. Kate, oh, Katie with a nice pass back to Hannah Mead. Hannah still fighting for possession. Loses it, gets it back. Mead again with the ball. Another shot. And Forest Hills gains, regains possession. Forest Hills brings it up. That's Paige O'Dowd with the ball and Aaron Page on D on her right now. Nicely broken up. Page now with possession of the ball. Nice pass over to Emily Dean. Emily Dean coming in all alone on the goaltender. This should be a goal, and it is. Well, that was cleanly set up. Aaron Page made a great defensive play, breaking up a four stills action. Took possession of the ball. Fed Emily Dean on an open break. Can't say much more than that. Ball goes in the back of the net, and we're up 9 0 with 4.34 to go. That's Amber Petticone out now with, um, and, and Lydia Hugerheid. Replacing Emily and, uh, and Katie Martin. They're both well-deserved rests. That's Paige O'Dowd putting the ball back in play for Forest Hills. Into uh, Kendall Schwartz, she, uh, she makes a pass over. There's a quick shot and a great save. It comes out to Britt. Brittany Lapine now with the ball. Fighting to maintain possession, looks like she coughed it up. Gets the ball back though on the possession, so Forrest Tills uh, did something uh, slightly illegal. We're back in play with Lydia Hugerheit with the ball. She gets a nice pass into Hannah Mead. Hannah turns, tries to get possession. Back, back to Lydia. Lydia now with the ball. She dumps it over to, that? that's Brittany. Brittany still with the ball with 14 to go on the shot clock. That's into Amber. Amber still looking to do something with the ball. There's 10 seconds on the shot clock. Comes all the way across, that's broken up. Hannah Mead now has it, she takes a shot. And a great save there by Four Stills goaltender Sarah Robertson. Ball's, ball does end up um, to retain possession to Grand Haven. They'll just put it in from the corner with a new shot clock. 3.37 to go. Nice centering pass then to Brittany. She can't come up with it. Forest Hills does momentarily. And that's Paige O'Dowd for Forest Hills, now with possession of the ball. She passes it up to Kate Scott. Kate Scott pushing it forward. She's developed her own break. This is a breakaway, a shot, and a goal. Well, Forest Hills goal, number four, Kate Scott. To get a defensive breakdown like that and send somebody in, usually, usually little red numbers go up on the board, and that's exactly what happened. Bucks coming back now with 3.08 to play. They're ahead by the score of 9 to 1. Hannah Boudry with the ball. She throws it in the middle to no one at the moment. Britley Lapine now with it on the far wing. 16 seconds to go in the shot clock. She's looking to, to, to pass it up. She does to Hannah Boudry. Hannah still with the ball. And again, a minor violation there, so she must put the ball back in play with a pass. She does to Aaron Page down in po down a low post. And there's a kick out there, a new shot clock, and the uh, offending player, that's 19 and white, Page O'Dowd, swims off. In the meantime, Bucks get a shot, save is made, back comes Forrest Hill. Their goaltender, Sarah, dumps it off to the offending player, that's 19 Page O'Dowd, and she swims it up. 2.30 to go in the game, 17 seconds to go in the shot clock. There's a nice pass up to number 10. That's Sarah Greeley. Still with the ball. We double team him on D. Now we break it back off. That was Lee Hooger height on D with a little help from, I believe it was Hannah Mead. Shot comes from the outside. Save is made. Back, back on the Bucks. 
Aaron Page swimming the ball up. She encounters a little opposition in the likes of Katie Scott. She makes a nice pass up to Hannah Boudry. Hannah fighting for the possession, but gets it back. 12 seconds on the shot clock. She passes over to Hannah Mead. Hannah trying to get a grip on it right now. Six seconds on the shot clock. She's swimming backwards. Aaron Page with the ball. Three seconds, two seconds. She centers the ball, but no shot comes, and the ball goes over to the Forest Hills. And that's Sarah Le Legault back with the ball. She gets it up to Paige O'Dowd. Paige O'Dowd, great D by uh, Hannah Mead. Minor violation is called. She puts the ball back in play on the far wing. Comes back to Paige O'Dowd. O'Dowd takes a shot. A little skipper, easily handled. Back come the Bucks. Brittany Lapine now with the ball. We've got about a minute 15 to go in the game. 22 seconds on the shot clock. Britt puts it in. That's Lydia Hugerhide. Back to Brittany Lapine. Nine seconds on the shot clock. She dumps it over to Aaron Page on the far wing. With three seconds to go, Aaron centers it in to Hannah Boudry. And unless that's a kick out, it's a change of possession. Oh, it is a kick out. We will get the ball with a, with a new shot clock, a new 30 seconds. Hannah has to put it in play by a pass. She did to Aaron Page. That ball comes back to Amber Petticone. Amber with the ball. She passes it over to Hannah Mead. Hannah takes a shot, and the ball hits the goal post, comes back out. We've got 41 seconds to go in the game, 26 on the shot clock for Forest Hills. And there Paige O'Dowd swims the ball back up. She passes the ball up to Shelby to Shannon. Back to Paige O'Dowd. Hannah Boudry on D right there, doing a great job. Hands up, excellent job. Gets the ball in. To there, Kate Scott. Again, great D on the part of the, the Buccaneers tonight. They're just, they've been working the ball diligently. There's a quick shot and a great save. We've got 12.88 to go in the game and the shot clock. Ball comes up to Paige. She's swimming it up. She's going for the long pass. That goes to Brittany Lapine, who dumps it off to uh, Lydia Hugerhide, who gets it back to Hannah Boudry, who takes a shot. And that is the ball game. The final score, the Bucks are nine, Forest Hills Rangers one. Uh, all in all, a great game by the Bucks. And um, I'd like to take one last opportunity to, th to thank our sponsors for the evening. Um, that would be Rising Good Building Center, generations of experience, helping to build the Tri-Cities for over 60 years. Go to risinggood.com to check out their monthly specials. Rising Good Building Center, go where the pros go. Great pizza and great atmosphere, you got to go to the original Clover Bar and Restaurant in Grand Haven, where they've been perfecting pizza since 1963. Don't forget their spaghetti and lasagna nights on Thursdays. Myers reaching out into the heart of our community with a community reward program. Go online at Meyer.com to check out their weekly specials. The Law Office of Skolton Fant for all your legal needs in Grand Haven and Holland. Qualities Custom Screen Printing is GHTV's t-shirt printer. Call for all your custom printing. Batteries Plus now has two locations. One in Muskegon on Harvey by, good, by Great Grand Traverse Company or visit them in Holland at 386 Bay Park Drive across from the Goodwill on Lakewood Boulevard. And finally, Grapes, Grain and Deli. For the best euros, shawarma, hummus, and other Mediterranean foods in Grand Haven, visit Grapes, Grain and Deli, located at 220 North Beacon Boulevard. You can find them on the web at grapesgrain.com or give them a call at 616-935-0806. And again, the crew tonight doing an excellent job. Director Corey Nick Nikoloff, producer Dennis Threadgill. On the cameras was Gage Ferguson, Cody Paris, and Nathan Hicks. Evan Seiler was on graphics. And David Marks on audio. This is Brian Page thanking everyone watching the show, and I hope you enjoyed it, and, and wishing the Bucks good luck for the rest of the season. I think that's a wrap. Good night, everybody.
Batteries Plus is your one-stop source for anything that needs a battery. Remember, if it needs a battery, all you need is Batteries Plus, America's battery experts. The original Clover Bar and Restaurant, bringing the Tri-Cities area a tradition in the finest freshly made pizzas. Stop in or carry out at the corner of Waverly and Beach Street. Meyer, reaching out into the heart of our community with quality service and the Meyer Rewards Program. Qualities, the local choice for all your custom screen printing needs. Right now, when your school organization places an order, 50 cents from each shirt will be donated back to the high school. Rising at Building Center, generations of experience helping to build the Tri-Cities for over 60 years. Golden Fant, a new location to serve all of your legal needs. Your full service legal team in Grand Haven and Holland. Call 842 3030. Grapes Grin and Deli, located on 220 North Beacon, has an amazing selection of Mediterranean foods. Spinach pie, gyros, tabbouleh, baklava, and much, much more is what you'll find at Grapes Grin and Deli. Stop in for a bite to eat or for some good times. Visit us online at grapesgrain.com. <laughs> 